Hi Fox, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at the paper that introduced the idea of property-based testing. We now have frameworks to do property-based testing in pretty much every major language like Java or Python or Ruby. But like many other cool ideas in programming languages, the origin of this idea was in the context of functional programming. And it all started with this paper that was published in the International Conference on Functional Programming back in 2000. As the name implies, the goal of this approach is to be able to specify the properties of the code under test and use that to drive testing as opposed to having to manually write test cases for every scenario. Now, testing on random inputs is a key idea that enables this, and we'll see how that works in detail in a bit. A functional programming like Haskell is a very natural context for this kind of testing methodology to arise in because when your program consists of composing pure functions that have no side effects, it's much easier to test each one of them individually and gain confidence in the functioning of the entire program end to end. On the other hand, with typical imperative programs that manage a lot of global state, you really need to test large units and have some sort of large integration tests to get that same level of confidence. The framework that the authors have built is called QuickCheck and one of its key design goals was to be lightweight. The authors mentioned that the entire implementation is only about 300 lines of Haskell. The key idea behind QuickCheck is that the test cases are generated automatically. And the way those test cases are generated is by essentially generating inputs at random. Now, one could argue that to have a good test, the distribution of the input should mirror the distribution of actual data that the program runs on. But as the authors found out in practice, Random testing is much simpler to implement and gives you about the same level of confidence anyway. Also, when you're testing small functions as opposed to the entire end-to-end -end system, you may not even know the distribution of the actual data. Let's look at a small example to make things concrete. And let's look at the simplest example, which is a function to reverse a list. That's the function we want to test. Now, irrespective of the implementation, we know that any list reversal function must satisfy these three properties. The first one is that reversing a list with a single element gives you the same list. The second one is that reversing the concatenation of two lists gives you the concatenation of the reverse of those two lists, but in the reverse order. And the third property is that reversing a list twice obviously gives you back the original list. The key idea in QuickCheck is to then express these properties simply as Haskell functions. And as you can see here, you can quite literally transcribe them into Haskell code for each of those properties. You then invoke quick check on each of those properties and quick check generates a large number of randomly generated inputs the default is 100 and tells you whether they all passed or not if one of the tests fails it gives you a concrete counterexample of that failure that was a really simple case but often we will need to test properties that only hold under certain preconditions for example for a function that computes the maximum of two values we want to be able to express that the max of x and y is y only under the condition that x is less than or equal to y another example is inserting an element into an ordered list we want to say that our input list is ordered and only then will our output be ordered as well. What QuickCheck does in such cases is to try generating test cases that satisfy the condition. 
so instead of just running 100 random test cases it will first try to find 100 test cases that already satisfy the condition now it might very well happen that the precondition is very hard to satisfy and in that case quick check will give up after some number of tries rather than just keep trying to generate valid test cases for a very long time but of course even in these cases where there is a precondition on our property we do want to ensure that we get good test coverage and that is exactly the motivation for custom test data generators for the example of insertion into an ordered list we express that property like this and what that is basically saying is that values for the input list should be generated by the test generator ordered list and that test data generator is written by the programmer to explicitly generate random ordered lists and quick check comes packaged with a number of conveniences that make it very easy to write these custom test generators for simple types and then also extend those to more complex user-defined types. The authors report on their experience using this quick check library for a number of their programming projects, but one that stood out to me was Chris Okasaki using it for his functional data structures library. He reports being very satisfied and quick check enabling him to test his library with less than a quarter of the effort of his previous test suite. The authors wrap up the paper with some thoughts on random testing as opposed to more systematic testing that looks at the control flow of the code under test and why they went with random testing. One reason of course is that more systematic testing would be much more complex but also in a language like Haskell which uses higher order functions and lazy evaluation it's not even clear how you would define that kind of testing it would need some very deep instrumentation at the level of the compiler and then quick check would have to be tied to a particular implementation of haskell the authors here also cite some prior work that compares the effectiveness of random testing with that of partition testing, which actually looks at the control flow of the code under test. And in that work, the authors found that by taking only 20% more tests for your random test, you get the same level of confidence as a partition test. And that is pretty compelling because a randomized testing setup like QuickCheck is much more lightweight and much easier to implement and manage than an in-depth testing framework that looks at control flow and so on. The authors note that one of the key benefits of property-based testing is that it puts the programmer into the frame of mind of formulating the properties that they want their code to satisfy, irrespective of the implementation. In other words, these properties are a formal specification for their code. And the reason why programmers often do not want to do formal specifications is that they don't really see a short-term benefit. With a framework like QuickCheck, there is a short-term benefit because tests are immediately executable and provide real-time feedback. So that was a quick look at the paper that first proposed the idea of property-based testing in the functional programming language Haskell. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.